Welcome to Upside Down. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a massive open world map using world composition inside Unreal 4. Before I show you how exactly to build up your own map and we are going to go through all the steps that you need to set up and start creating the map, I'm going to quickly run you over of a personal project that I worked a while ago. It's a pretty huge map. So it's around 35 to maybe 40 square kilometers. And I'll run you over roughly how I split it and uh, what kind of optimization measures I took and also how I'm loading different areas and zone and also why I'm doing all these steps. I'll just show you a little bit uh, first from above. So this is uh, how the map looks like. It's uh, one huge island and then there are a couple of other islands on the side. For, for the 35 square kilometers roughly that I told you, I'm uh, including only the big island. I don't include the ones on the side. So there is one thing about Unreal, just to tell you quickly, and it's about that uh, you can do 20 by 20 kilometers, which is almost 10 times bigger than what I'll show you today. So have in mind that having such a huge world, it's a big deal. It's very hard to achieve and also it's a very... And also it's super a lot of work. So uh, let's uh, let's quickly start. I'll just... First thing that I'll do, I'll just go uh, into window and we'll open levels to show you how exactly the levels are being splitted. So in this section levels, it's the place where you're going to spend most of the time when you're building big worlds because this is the place that you actually set it up everything. Like this is the place where we are going to set up the different panels and we are going to add new ones or remove some of them and so on and so on. We are going to go through all the process but first uh, let's go quickly through how many different sections I have for this map so you can see here that I have 143 different levels so the thing is that not all of them are different parts of the terrain some of them are kind of done like a separate layer just for optimization purposes because I had quite a lot of uh, assets that I put into this uh, level and a good example is actually this city over here so this part so this thing has, uh, I'll just find it in the list. It's called uh, New Hope. So you can see that uh, we have the New Hope city and then everything uh, to here is just about this region here. So the first part, New Hope, it's just about the terrain. And then the buildings, uh, I have some dynamic lights, uh, NPCs, props, and so on and so on, is on different uh, layers. Why? Because I want sometimes when you are outside the city, for example, you are over here, and you are looking towards the city, you can see that there are some buildings and uh, some elements that you can see. So this is pretty much, I want this layer to be visible. Then we have the terrain, which of course we want to be visible, but then all the rest like VFXs, spawning points, NPCs, uh, some uh, foliage and, or some other elements, uh, like I think that I was even uh, planning to kind of put one extra layer which will be just for some small props and dressings on the scene. So all of these things you don't really want them to be loaded because they are going to take from your memory. So. Uh, for those we can put a lot smaller loading distance than for example for those two and already if we go a little bit further away we can start uh, unloading those like uh, let's say we game here and of course if our character is somewhere here you can see that uh, those stones are already hiding everything so we can remove those layers as well so this is first thing that you need to have in mind, like if you are going to create a huge map, just have in mind how exactly you're going to optimize it. Th think, think and find some places and some zones, like when you're doing your designs, which will allow you to kind of hide from the perspective of the player other parts which are already not needed for the gameplay. So uh, I'll just show you a little bit more from the whole level, what were my thought process behind them and what why I did uh, those decisions. So we have the city, then we have this is the outside city zone and uh, this is pretty much the zone where you are going to see most of the things like buildings or the terrain, but we don't need uh, those smaller elements as I said. So after that, there are two places where you actually exit the zone. So the first one is this bridge, which uh, takes you through this 
rock passage and here for example if you already come you can see that uh, again it's a place where i can easily unload the city because we already don't see any elements this is like one extra piece which is outside the city it's just for decoration purposes but it's not a part of the city another site where you can exit is already here so here there is like a small uh, portion which i'm kind of using it as a transition for example if you're passing through here i can already start unloading like for example the buildings and later on i can remove the terrain as well and i can start loading the next uh, section so here these elements are being loaded like once you are passing this zone and after the tree these elements are being loaded and already when you come over here i'm loading the next zone you can see that the next zone is uh, starting to like blend into a different type of environment so you don't want those assets and those assets from here to be loaded at the same time it's going to take too much of your memory so you want to kind of make such transitions or such places where you kind of use or, or blend like few assets in between so you can uh, make those transitions very easily and uh, the players first are not going to really notice them and the other thing is that uh, you can just go through different assets and different uh, optimizations for for the memory and like unload some parts of your terrain and then load another part so th this is the second part and from here already the player can have two options like one option is we can go over towards this side and towards this side you can see that there is like uh, quite good forest you don't see anything you are just able to see this huge tower this is like one of the landmarks which uh, i have and this tower is actually an element uh, separate on its own where you could uh, see as landmark and when you're building big worlds like this you need to have some kind of a guidance for the player because it's very easy to get lost especially for new players so always think about some uh, landmarks i can tell you for example zelda legend of zelda they have amazing uh, they have amazing level designs so you can just check uh, some of their articles or there's like quite a lot of information out there about landmarks and how they're guiding their players so this is one place where you can go and once you go here you can see this landmark and it shows you that okay there is something there in distance and then there is another passage over here uh, sorry for some of the holes that you see this is a project that i never actually finished so uh, you can go through this cave and you are back on this zone over here that we just passed through the bridge so here i can already unload everything while you're in the tunnel and load everything that i need for for the next zone uh, now let's move to the other side here you can either go towards uh, this completely new zone which is desert environment or you can go uphill and the one if you are going uphill again you are going to see this tower as a landmark but you can see that still the rest of the city is uh, very hidden behind all these trees so there's like one or two buildings maybe visible but overall you can mostly see this landmark even if you hide let's say those buildings it's still something that players won't even really notice it unless they are like very recognizable ones but uh, generally it's something that you can just leave and from here we already have the zone uh, going up here you can see that here i have another landmark so i'm pretty much using those towers to show the player some guiding points and like that this is some kind of a landmark you can see one over here and then when moving towards this zone i'm using uh, those beacon towers to kind of point the same way as those and here you can see that it's already like desert environment completely new set there is another city and uh, there is also another type of environments around so now that i showed you a little bit around the project and talked about my design and why i'm taking such decision i hope that you have a little bit better understanding in terms of why and how to construct bigger worlds now we are going to jump into a new scene i'm going to show you how exactly to make the whole setup inside the world composition tools 
Okay, now we are already in a completely new scene. It's it's an empty, just default scene in a site Unreal, and we are going to build a small terrain divided in a couple of different sections, and I'll show you how to adjust the distance in which each section is going to be loaded, and also I'm going to show you how to edit them, how to expand, or how to remove some parts of them. First thing, we are going to Window, and then we are going to Levels. Now in Levels, we are going to add our first level. So here from Levels, I'm just going to go and create new and we can choose what exactly we want to create. You can see that we can choose some template, like for example, if we want to have the default one or some other template from the level ones, or of course, we can choose an empty one. Here, my advice is going to be create the initial level, which is going to hold these sub levels. And inside this initial level, just place your light information or place like just the most essential and valuable things that, that you need. For example, uh, you can put your game mechanics, you can put all these other things. So this is kind of like a holder for... So this is kind of like a box which holds all the other sub-levels. And then on top of that, build your empty levels and add them additionally and expand them. Don't add like don't add specific logic inside your sub-levels because if some level is not going to be loaded, this information is going to be lost. So for example, if you have, let's say, some vfixes or you have like some specific lights or something like that, those items are not going to be loaded once this level is out of reach. So we have our initial level, which is a default scene inside Unreal, and there we already have lights, we have sky, and now on top of it, we are just going to add empty levels, and inside these empty levels, I'm going to build the terrain. So we are clicking on empty level. Now it's going to open us where to save this new map. So I'm just going to save it over here and I'll name it level 01. And you can see that super easy, we already have our sub level. So now that we have our level created, I want you to notice that at the moment we have our persistent level and it's in blue and the other one is with white text. Once something is highlighted in blue, this means that currently you're working in this level. So for example, if I come and place some actor inside here, it will place it in this level. If we want to start placing actors inside our sub-level that we just created, we need to right click on it and then click make current. And now this is the one that is going to be in blue color. And this means that we are going to add our actors inside of it, not inside our persistent level. Now it's time to show you how to add a little bit more levels and also how to use the world composition. But just before that, hit the like button as it's greatly helping my channel and also consider subscribing so that you don't miss all my tutorials. So in the level tab, you can see that now we have levels and also we have details, but there is no button which should be over here which says world composition. This is because in our persistent level, we don't have world composition enabled. I'm going to close levels then we are going to go into world settings and here you can see that there is a tab called world and there is enable world composition we need to enable it and if you already created a level as i did earlier you will get the same error message it basically telling us that we cannot use the world composition at the moment because we already created a sub level so what we need to do is just go back to levels then i'm going to right click and remove selected we're going to click yes and i'm also going to go into content browser I'll just drag it from my second screen and I'm going to delete this level as we don't need it. We are going to force delete it and then we are coming again to world and enabling the world composition. Now everything works fine. Great. So now if we go to window levels, you can see that we will already have one more small button over here which has summons world composition. This is perfect because this is exactly what we wanted to do. Now if I press on it, you can see that uh, it will open me something like a top-down map where we can see that this arrow here is uh, where we are at the moment in the world. If I move around, it will also move. And here we can already start adding our sub-levels. I'm going to levels, create new, and we are doing the same. I'm naming this level 01. And this time you can see that we have our level, but we also have our work composition enabled. Now I'm going to right click and load our level because at the moment you can see that it's grayed out. This means that it's not being loaded. So I'm loading it. Then I'm going to make it current. And after that, we are going to add a terrain. So I'll just for short period close this window and I'm going to modes and after that to landscape. And I'll create 15 by 15 and just click create. And we are going back into our levels. 
And this time when we go to world composition, we will be able to see our plane that we just created for our terrain. From here on, if we want to add some extra levels, we can always select our level, right click and then go to the add button on the bottom. We can choose on which side on our already created terrain we want it. So I'm just going to click on minus X and then it will open us again the possibility to save it. Once we do this, we can now see that we have two levels. If I close those, you can see how our world map looks like now. We already have both of these terrain pieces all together. Now already we can go into our terrain edit tools and after that go to sculpt and start sculpting something like a mountain or something like this that we want. You can see that now it's going from one section of the terrain to another section of the terrain. So for example, I'm just going to now show you here and here and Unreal is doing automatically everything for the blending. It's the same if you start painting materials on top of it, it will automatically do all the blending. The only thing that you need to have in mind that this blending and everything that works seamlessly all together is only if you have already enabled the world composition because otherwise it wouldn't know what exactly are these changes and how exactly to link them together. Thank you for joining me in today's tutorial. I hope that it was useful and helpful. Leave a like and a comment down below if you want me to do more tutorials like this and explain you a little bit more in depth regarding building bigger worlds and optimizing them. See you next time.